I'm interested in how in the various cultures in different meditation retreat centers and uh, in monasteries, how tightly they hold the silence. My first long retreat was a three-month retreat at, at Insight Meditation Society with Joseph Goldstein and Sharon Salzberg and that gang. And uh, they were, it was really quiet. I mean, they really uh, emphasized the silence. And the whole time, other than the interviews with my teachers, I said, excuse me, twice. Once <laughs> when I accidentally pushed the soap over the top of the barrier and knocked somebody else in the head in the shower next door. <laughs> and then once when I was carrying a mop around and hit somebody with it. And that's it. But then, So then when I got to Asia and lived in a, a real Buddhist monastery, oh, yeah. there was a lot of talking going on there. In fact, I found that to be more conducive to my mental health and my practice because I think uh, human beings are, are set up to need some social interaction. I've also been at the Forest Refuge at Insight Meditation Society, and they have taken the silence yet another step to absolute do not, do not speak. And it's yeah. weird. It's creepy oh. to me, way too quiet. So I yeah. actually prefer the um, the way it is in Asia. Yeah, it's a silent retreat, but but people talk once in a while and, and nobody's going to say much about it. So my own thinking on this has evolved so that uh, – now, rather than thinking of silence as my entitlement, like rather than saying I'm entitled to silence so that you better not disturb me, it's more like each of us can give the gift of silence to mm. other people. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Turn it around, yeah. 